What about media? These are things like movies, videos, and stuff like that, all the other kinds of ways that we can access information these days. And it's very easy to do these days, right? Well, the APA does cover that. And here we have an example of a movie. So in this case, we have different people involved in a movie, don't we? We have a producer. We have a director, as possible. We have a year of the movie's release. We have the name of the movie, and we have this brackets, right? What are the brackets for? To tell us more information. So here we specify motion picture, which is a movie, and then the country of origin and the studio. So this is very much like a book, isn't it? In that you also need to include where was it made at, where was it published, what's the city, the country, and then the publisher. So movies are very similar that way. How about uh, music? Music, again, we have here uh, the writer, the songwriter, the copyright year for the song, the title of the song, and then we have the parentheses, because the parentheses explains a little bit more, and here we say, who recorded this? That means who actually sang the song. And then we have the title of the album, or the CD, that it's on, the collection that it's on. And then what is it on? Is it on a CD? Is it on a cassette? Is it on a record? Is it from something else? I guess you could write there it's from iTunes. What's the location, the city that it was created in? And the label, that is the company that owns it or recorded it or paid for it or is distributing it, one of those. And the date of recording is different from song or copyright. So you could have a copyright that is from a long time ago, but then the song has been re-recorded and it's a different date. So you can go ahead and put that in here. So we can see here this is getting to be more and more special cases, isn't it? This is in general kind of makes sense, kind of looks like something that we've done in the other cases, like the books and the sections of the books, but it's getting a little bit more special and special. Well, there you go. What I like about the APA is you can actually look these up and they have examples of all these different cases. So here we have a, a singer, Lang KD, 2008, and I think she's also the writer. The song is called Shadow and the Frame. The album it's on is called On Watershed, and it's a CD. And it is published in New York City, New York State. Nonsuch Records is the company that published it. How about a video? Very common. So here we have the video, which will be a producer. So American Psychological Association. In this case, it's a producer. We may use the director. It depends on the case. What information do you have? Here it is 2000 is the release date. And here's the name, the title, Responding Therapeutically to Patient Expressions of Sexual Attraction. And it's on a DVD. And here is the location you can get it from. What about a podcast? Podcasts are very popular. So that is the audio recording, which is online. And we have the producer, so Van Noyes, and here we say producer. And here is the date. Now, a podcast has a year, of course, but a podcast can also have a date. It can have a month and a day because podcasts can be released every month, every week, every day, just like a newspaper. So if this podcast is released every month, then you should include the month. If this podcast is released once a week, then you should probably include the month and then the day so that we know which of the weeks it's released in. So if we want to go back and look for it, we can find it. Here is the title, Shrink Wrap Radio, Audio Podcast, and it's retrieved from this URL here. What about an episode from a television program? So that would be a TV show, and it's usually going to be like a series. And in this case, we have the writer, and we also have the director. So this is a great example of 
the more information you can include, the better. The APA guidelines is not telling you that you can only include one or that you have to include two. What they're saying is there's different cases depending on the information you have, and it may even depend on what it is you're talking about in your research. So in this case, we have the writer, Egan D, and the director, Alexander J. So we put in parentheses, writer and director. Then we have the year of the release, that it was aired on TV. Failure to communicate. Again, this day here is the day it was, it was released. This year is the year it was released, not the year it was made. It could have been made earlier and it was released later. Then we have the title, failure to communicate. And then here, what do we do? This is very cool. We use the brackets again. Remember, the brackets are a way for you to explain more, to give more information. And in this case, television series episodes. So it's one episode of a series. And this is in, what's it in? Is it inside of a book? No, it's inside of a series. And the series is called How. And the series has a producer. That producer's name is D. Shore. So he's kind of like an editor. First name first, last name last. And then here in parentheses, what is he? He is executive producer. And the series is called How. So that's kind of like a book editor. And the company is Fox Broadcasting, which is New York City, New York State, Poland, Fox Broadcasting. What about software? Sometimes you cite software in your methodology. You tell what kind of software you're using. Well, the simple way to do that is to have a name, last name, first name, middle name, a year, the name of the program, the version number of the program, and then use your special information inside your brackets to tell a little bit more, and then the company and the location of the company that released it. Another way you could do this is you could have, again, the name of the maker, the producer, or somehow related to the owner, the year, the title of the program, the description of the program, what is it, and then where did you get it online, for example, because it could be a web program or it could be something used online or downloaded from online. So let's look at an example of this. Comprehensive Meta Analysis, version 2, computer software, Inglewood, New Jersey, Biostat. So Biostat is the company that makes it. New Jersey is the location. Inglewood is the city where it's made. Again, how do you find this? This may be inside the manual. It may be online, something about the company. What is this? It is computer software. It is version 2. And what do we have? Do we have like a... a a person's name? Do we know somebody? No, in this case, we're just going to use the computer program's name. Comprehensive Meta Analysis. That is the name of the computer program. How about some information that's written and it's unpublished manuscript, for example, with a university cited? So, this is an example of what would this be a good example of? This is like at some universities, professors write papers and they don't really publish them, but they put them online and they may be kind of part of ongoing research and you may find this to be interesting or useful for your research. Sometimes it's called a monogram and that's like kind of a paper, but it's not a published paper. So maybe that's possible. Let's take a look at how we would cite that. Maybe you found it somewhere or maybe you were able to uh, find it through Google Scholar. Well, here are the author's names, and then we have the date. Here we have a name of the paper, a five-dimensional measure of drinking motives, and then right here is the key point. What's the journal? There is no journal. It's unpublished manuscript. Unpublished manuscript, meaning that it's not published. It is at the university, though, somehow related to the university, so it's Department of Psychology, University 
of British Columbia and what's the location? Vancouver, Canada. So that is a probably one of the fewer cases you would use, but it is possible I have actually done that before myself.